The reason why I can talk about it is because I'm going through it. This is a, actually, this was actually done um, on a spur of the moment. I actually asked Michael whether anything is coming up that he would want me to speak at for depression, about depression. And he said, you know, why not this particular arena? So please bear with me. I'm not going to talk about anything technical, in fact. But it will hopefully have some impact for you by the end of it. And I also need to say up front that actually I'm still in recovery, which means that I'm not well. Uh, which means that after this presentation, I might just pack up and go because I'm not, um, it's not safe for me to stay out that, um, at night that long. I'm not kidding. Okay, so how I'll do this, usually I'll just go through a bit of my background, my experience with depression. I, I usually seek to help people to understand depression from the inside because that's something that people don't normally get. And uh, how to seek help, how you can help others, and a takeaway for you guys. I hope to be able to give you a takeaway that will be specific to IT. I have been in IT since 2002. I graduated as an electrical engineer, only with a programming background, but not, it wasn't my major. I waited for four or five months before I could get a job in computing, basically, in programming. Thank you. So last, uh, is this better? Or do you prefer the mic? Uh, mic? OK. So I started a new job last June 2017. And um, you know everything is supposed to be going well. I had an earlier bout of depression in 2006, 2009. Not very major. I took medicine for that, and I was fine. I was, everything, everything was going well. But towards the end of uh, July 2017, that was just a month after I started my new job, I had a panic attack over a weekend. And what's a panic attack? It's, you know, when, when you're about to be hit or when, when you hear a loud crash, you jump, you, 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 you cower down, you, you, you look for the threat. That happened to me without any threat around me. And that was abnormal. And then the next day I was at work and trying hard not to cry the whole day. That was also abnormal. So I went to my GP and he knows my um, background. So I got diagnosed again with depression. So I was a month into a new job. How many of you, a month into your new job, even if your doctor tells you, you should take a break, how many of you would take that break? Yeah. So it took him 15 minutes of talking before I agreed to take the break. Um, I was already suicidal at that point. Okay, I have to warn you guys, I will talk a bit about suicide, about suicidal tendencies. If that makes you uncomfortable, you may need to step out for a while because it can trigger certain um, thoughts. Okay, so um, yeah, I, I went through my whole barrage of depression prevention techniques and you know, things like going out in the sun, that's proven to help. Exercise, that helps. Uh, walking in the parks, that's supposed to help too. And it's, this is all um, that's medically proven. Nothing helped. Um, on the 8th of August, I actually went to work. I tried to go to work, rather, and I couldn't. I just couldn't cope. I couldn't cope with looking at people. I couldn't cope with talking to people. I had to leave. And um, on the 14th of August, I was at the Botanic Gardens trying to find a way to end it. What held me back was basically I didn't want to create a mess for the gardeners. You know, Botanic Gardens is so nice, right? I don't want to make a mess. It, really, that was the only reason I didn't do anything. On the 16th of August, I even went to a cat cafe. I love cats. Oh, wait, did I switch? Sorry. Yeah, I love cats and it didn't help. So on 17th of August, I started my plan. Uh, I brought my boys out for a good meal with my wife and that day was supposed to be like the last day I would have them. But the good thing was that uh, before that, someone had told me to, that in a man, um, uh, it, at a moment of mental health crisis, and this is important for everyone, at a moment of mental health crisis, if you cannot cope, or if someone you know cannot cope, Singapore has this place called the Institute of Mental Health. Some of us used to know it as Woodbridge, 
It's now the Institute of Mental Health. It's a good place. It's not a bad place. I'll talk a little bit about that later. They actually have this mental health helpline. Go to their website. It's there. It's 24-7, manned around the clock, and it is manned by counsellors, trained counsellors. I called that number because someone had referred me to, to, to tell me, just go to IMH if you can't cope. So I called that number and I promised myself I will not be the first one to hang up. And I'll do what they say. So I did what they said. They told me to come in and I went in and the doctor, admitting doctor, basically said, no, you need to stay. Stayed there at this place called the Mood Disorder Unit. So depression falls under what is known as a mood disorder, where your mood is, well, disordered. It's, it's a mental illness where your mood is affected. And I stayed there for about six days. Now, the thing about IMH is that it sounds scary, but and it can be scary. <coughs> I, I wouldn't hide that fact. But when you are that close to the brink, you don't have a choice. You'd rather stay safe. Okay? And that's why I have to make choices like, if I come for this, I will have to leave right after my talk because I need to stay safe. I'm still in recovery. Those are my guinea pigs. Um, I take medicine. And medicine is, is because I have imbalance of chemicals in my, mind, in my brain, supposedly. Has anyone opened up my brain to find out? No. Um, I go for talk therapy. I have a psychotherapist that I visit every week now because I'm not working. I'm not able to work. And yeah, my pets, we bought them shortly after I got discharged. And they've been a wonderful companion. Disclaimer, please remember, <coughs> everyone's brain is different. Everyone's treatment plan will be different. Your friend may be going through depression. His treatment plan may sound significantly different from mine. It doesn't mean that they are not equally um, useful. All right? Now, to understand depression from the inside, the first thing you need to know is that statistically speaking, in Singapore, 5% it's actually 5 point something percent, 5.7 if I'm not wrong, right? That was in 2016, which means statistically in a room of 20 people, at least one person will have depression in their lifetime. And in this crowd, that's about 40 people, at least two, and I'm already one of them, okay? <clears throat> How does depression actually feel like? For me, imagine that you have this, well, I call it a chainmail veil. It's, Imagine that you put on something on your, hat, on your head and it's really tight, all right? And there's a veil that descends between you and the world, around, all around you. It, it's not just your eyes. So when you see, everything is muted, is grey. And this is an actual physical phenomenon, all right? That's actually what I see. Everything is grey. And on top of that, this veil keeps out any positive messages. So if you tell me that I'm doing a good job right now standing up here, I will tell you, no. And that is true even now. Okay? Um, there, is physical, there are physical changes. I had change in appetite. I actually don't speak like this normally. Right? I, yeah. I have problems with memory as well. So my slides actually are designed so that I can remember what I want to say. But the most important thing that you need to know and remember about depression, anything else you can forget, this is the one thing. Please remember that depression is never by choice. And that will help you if you want to help someone with depression or if you want to help yourself. If it's not by choice, you don't need to blame yourself. Okay? All right? Uh, and, death, and in that same way, suicide... In media portrayal, always comes across as the easy way out. Suicide is not the easy way out for people with depression. Suicide is the only way out. We don't have a choice. We're not given a choice. We're caught in that, that trap and we can't get out of it. How can we get out of it? With help. And help comes in the form of medication, etc. But before we find that help, or even if we find that help, it doesn't guarantee that we'll get out of the pain. I've been like this since July of last year. <coughs> I'm still not able to work. Can any of you guarantee that I will recover? 
I'm sorry to be so depressive about it, but you know, that's the reality. Okay, um, um, and on, on another layer, on another level, for you to understand, my personal struggles <coughs> actually start from energy and emotion. I think those two words basically sum up everything else. I struggle with energy, so today I started my day late on purpose because I know I have to come for this. In general, by this time, I'm usually quite flat and I can't really talk, I can't really interact. In fact, when I came in, I only spoke to certain people and then I sat down because I cannot interact with people. It's a difficulty. Uh, emotion is a problem because I can't regulate my emotions. I'm either not feeling anything or I can be overly irritable. But that improves sometimes, that gets worse sometimes. Getting out of bed is difficult. And I mean, I mean, this is not your six o'clock hit the snooze alarm three times type of difficult. This is like stay in bed one hour because you don't even see the point. Kind of difficult. And um, happiness is a problem. I don't know how to feel happy. I still struggle. <coughs> it's better now. Um, when I spend time with my sons and my wife, sometimes I feel happy. It's a foreign emotion to me. Okay? Uh, I have a problem with pride and achievement. I don't talk to me about my achievements. I've got none. I have a problem walking. I walk slower now. I talk more haltingly. Sometimes I struggle to find the words. Um, and I can't, I can't engage in socials. Yeah. Now, when you want to talk, talk about avoiding depression, the most important thing, especially in IT, is just I don't know why we do it. Lawyers do it for the money. IT, I don't know why we do it, but we work ourselves to, to the bone. We just keep working and working, and all the time, IT people, the first thing you ask, hey, how are you? Busy. It's not a badge of honour. It's not meant to be. Take care of yourself. Self-care is not going on holidays. It includes going on holidays, but if you go on a holiday where everything is planned and you're rushing from one place to another, that's not going to help. What is self-care? Self-care is literally taking care of yourself, your needs, recharging, finding a way to de-stress, let it out, so that you can continue, you can go further. All right? You need sleep. Please, you need sleep. Some of you are fresh grads, right? Are some of you fresh grads? Well, okay, junior devs, you need sleep. I know, it, I know it sounds weird. You need coffee more than you need sleep, right? No, you need sleep. Good quality sleep. If you keep getting nightmares, something's wrong. Okay, exercise, very important. Um, in fact, you may even want to prioritize exercise if you feel yourself going down to a slump because exercise actually releases endorphins, things like jogging especially. Outdoor time. Singapore's a nice place for depression. Why? Because there's a lot of sun. There is actually something known as seasonal depression where in winter, the rates of suicides go up. Okay. Meditation has been known to help. It didn't help me, but it can help you. I can't speak about it because it can't help me. Okay, but <coughs> excuse me. Most importantly, the unfortunate truth is that depression can't fully be avoided. Some people are more susceptible. Sometimes it's event triggered. Sometimes you just get it and you don't even know why. Okay. Now, um, this is important because you want to help someone with depression, the first thing you need to do is to, to go back to what Michael first raised earlier, known as the code of conduct. Be kind. I can't stress this too much because the one thing, the one most difficult thing I've come to, I've come to experience with depression is when well-meaning people, they mean well, tell me what to do. Be more positive. Surround yourself with positivity. You, someone you know is depressed, those are the first things that come to mind and you want to help, right? Yeah, don't. Why? Because always, always, I will say back, if I have the energy, if I don't, I cut the relationship. I have no choice. It's live or die. And it's literal live or die because I can get spun into a suicidal tendency again. The thing I say to them is this. Do you think I have not tried this? Do you think I have not tried that? Do you think, excuse my language, but do you think I'm stupid? 
things like that actually happen. My own mum actually told asked me, so do you go to see your psychotherapist? Yes, I do every week. You go regularly? Yes, I go every week. I'm afraid you're lazy. How do you respond to that? Right? So the most important thing you need to do when you face someone with depression, or if you have depression, be kind, be there, listen. You can't understand what someone else is going through unless you listen, you open your ears, you don't talk unless you have questions to clarify. Is that important in the technical field? Definitely. Because the art of listening is very important for you to get your specs right. If you don't listen, you get your specs wrong. It's, it's clear cut. So practice that with people who have depression, who are nearing depression. Listen. Don't give advice. Don't jump into it. Um, stay realistic. Give them facts. Okay, so this is specific to depression now. Give them facts. Depressed people tend to look only on the negatives. Give them facts that they can't run away from. You'll get one of two re responses. One is they, are, they will reluctantly have to agree with you. The other is they will spin away from you. You can't help that either. <coughs> okay? And yeah, don't give unsolicited advice. Seriously, don't. Just don't. Refrain from this. This one, the second one, right? Don't help to feel better about yourself. You know, when you see someone who is suffering, it's difficult. You want to help, especially if it's a loved one, especially if it's a friend. You want to help. Please don't help just to feel better. That, that won't work. Okay? Instead, listen. Just be there. Um, help to seek help if someone is getting suicidal, etc., etc. Know what to do. So the, the standard answer now is you don't have to call the police unless that person is literally at the edge. Okay? You can actually call the helpline, the mental health helpline from IMH. They will advise you what to do. They are actually trained to, for people who are seeking help for help. Help for someone else, sorry. Okay? And you are not responsible for another person's choices. So why is that there? If you have ever encountered someone in your life who has successfully committed suicide, that statement is for you. Please remember, I'm depressed, but it's still my choice. It's still my action, not yours. You can't control me. And that's, in, if that is true, remember, you're not responsible for another person's choices. Three quick questions that you may want to remember when you come to talk about suicide or suicidal tendencies. How do you know whether someone is on the brink? Um, not literally, like someone's really thinking about it. The first question to ask is, seems obvious, but it's actually very important. Do you even want to talk, think about committing suicide? Because sometimes, someone may tell you that, I want to end it, and then you ask, look, are you serious? Are you really thinking about suicide? And I said, no, not really. And that's okay, that's good. There are times when people actually say things like that. You know, so clarify, are, are they actually thinking about suicide? Then if they are, go on to the second question. Do you have a plan? For depressed people, once, actually not, not even depressed people, for suicide, once you have a plan, once you know how you're going to do it, chances are much higher that you're going to do it. And then the third one, do you have a timeline? Okay, so it's, this, is a, this is not if else, this is meant to be a conditional. Okay? I love talking to tech people. Um, this is meant to be a conditional. Do you have a timeline? Okay, if, if yes, yes. Do you have a timeline? Yes. You need to seek help as soon as you can. You need to inform family members. You need to inform close people around to monitor the person. There's also one last thing. If you know someone has been depressed for a while, with especially with no outside help, okay, you find them suddenly very peaceful and happy. That is a huge warning sign. You need to watch the person very closely. Okay, it means that all three are yeses. You don't even need to ask generally. All right. So these are the warning signs to look out for. Now, I know I'm talking to IT folks, so you know. IT is all about finance, I know. Um, when it comes to IT, there are some specific things that we need to remember. 
in IT, I mean, I, we, you just saw a wonderful presentation about CSS grids. It's amazing. It's wonderful. And we, we, with what we can do with web and with JS, and we, we can change the world. <coughs> but while we aim to change the world, remember that the world doesn't have to change for you. This is especially true when you're new into the industry. Because when you come in, you're full of ideas, you're full of, of, of um, verve. You think you can change you know, the organization you're in. You think you can, you know, all these ideas are so good. How can people not want them? Yeah, people don't want them. Okay? Aim to change the world, but don't demand that the world changes for you because that wouldn't happen. And if you keep banging yourself up against this wall, you get disappointed very fast. That is one road to depression. The second thing is related to what I just said. It's all about people. Technology doesn't exist for the sake of technology. But I think a lot of us IT folks forget that. We tend to laugh at our users. But you know what? Without your users, who is going to use your software? Why are you working? Why are you doing IT? Ultimately, it's to improve the lives of people. And I'll give you another random one that you may not have thought of. You know why senior devs always come to junior devs and say, can you please comment your code properly? You know why? It's because it's about the people. Don't think that your code is for yourself only. Other people want to review it. Other people want to look at it. You comment it. It's cumbersome. You know why I don't think of other people? If you aren't ready to think of other people, IT may actually not be not for you. Right? Gone are the days where sysadmins just sit behind inside one small room and refuse to talk to anyone. All right? So it's all about people. And in that same way, this is how you will start seeing, noticing, and helping people who need help before it's too late for them to seek help. Okay? Be proud of your scars. A lot of us, especially the senior IT folks, and if any of you are mid-career, I was, I was told that you know, some of you would be mid-career changing. If you are in that category, be proud of your scars. They've made, them, they've made you who you are. It's not to say that you are less capable in a certain area, therefore you know, you're, you're not so good at JS, therefore you're not a good coder. <coughs> um, things like that. No. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of what you become. Now, I say this, but I don't believe it myself. <laughs> okay? And the last one is take care to go long. <sighs> if you don't take care of yourself, your company won't. I'll just say that really as bluntly as I can. If you don't take responsibility for your own health, no one will. No company, no organization, no group owes you health. And if you are not the one to take care of your own health, you will not go long. In fact, I find it quite a good thing that in the open source community, when things happen, the big players, or at least the more popular people in the open source community, people reach out for them, people help them. Right? I, I've seen stories where um, I think one of the open source people passed away and everyone was out to help. But you know what? Not every one of us will be famous in the open source community. Not every one of us will be um, big people in our companies where immediately something happens to you and, and the, the CEO is rushing to you and asking, hey, do you break your leg or something? No. So take care of your own health. All, that, that, that joke, all the jokes about sleep, coffee, all that, it's not a joke. Please take care of yourself so that you can last. Okay? And then when you go on senior devs, then you can tell your junior devs, um, please take care of yourselves. Right, so takeaway, final takeaway is please remember you're never alone. Whatever you're going through, whatever you've gone through, whatever you're struggling with, you're never alone. I'm not alone in depression. It helps. Because in depression, I'm isolated from everything and everyone, including my wife. Imagine how painful that is, especially since my wife is my best friend. 
But knowing that there are other people who are going through the same thing, who understand what I'm going through even before I say it, it helps. So, for you junior devs especially, remember, especially in technology, in fact, the problem that you're setting out to solve probably has been solved already. <laughs> Look at that. You're not alone. You don't have to keep struggling alone. Okay? And the second thing, I think, in, especially in Asian society, regardless of your race and gender, but particularly for men, it's okay to not be okay. We have a certain set of emotions that we don't like. Can you name them? Don't be angry. Don't be sad. Don't cry. Don't... Oh, oh something else I heard before was, don't cry for nothing. Um, you know, things like that. No. When things happen, it's okay to feel those emotions. It's when you actually lock them away that one day, down the road, something happens that reminds you of it. You, you know what will happen? That jack-in-the-box will come out right there and then and surprise you in a nasty way. That's exactly what's happening to me right now. So it's okay to not be okay. It's okay to, to struggle. It's okay to find it, to admit that, hey, I think I'm not doing very well right now. I need a bit of help. That's fine. You know what's true strength? True strength isn't about not falling. True strength is about falling and getting up, no matter how many times it takes. I'm doing that now, because I have no choice. I owe it to my wife, I owe it to my, my kids. I can't even tell you that I owe it to myself. All right? Okay, um, unfortunately, I'm leaving after this. Do, do we want questions here or...? Um, no? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, I just have a few resources for you here. That's the Mental Health Helpline, in case you can't find the IMH website for whatever reason. That's the Singap Samaritans, the Singapore Helpline. I blog there, that I draw a comic about depression there, and that's my email, depressionsg at gmail.com. Anything you want to ask about depression or IT and depression, please feel free. Uh, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to take questions, so I'll have to leave it at that. Okay, thank you.